Welcome to ME1201 for CAD. This is a 3D modeling activity using Autodesk Inventor 2020 for figure 7 question for A. So let's head over to the 2D autographic drawing, which you can find in page 7 66. Page 7 66, you'll be presented with this fully sectioned uh, part view name spindle. Right, so let's first simplify the whole design. We will remove all the holes here. Okay, all these holes, remove it. This M12 holes will also be removed. Okay, and then the chamfer, 4 by 45 degree, the chamfer will be removed. Your R5 radiuses here, 1, 2, will be removed. So when we are drawing the lines here, we will just take it as sharp corners. And also the R8 radius will also be removed. So in this year will also be sharp corner. Alright. And lastly, there's one more chamfer here. Right at the top here. The dimensions. Let's do the tracing of the dimension. Is given horizontal dimension of 24mm here to this end. And it has a diameter 92 to it. Alright. So when you get presented by this uh, dimensioning style, it's not possible to create this whole uh, part itself using your chamfer tool, okay? especially this region here. So what is required is actually you have to create the chamfer here together when we are revolving or using the revolve tool for this whole spindle part. Okay, so this portion is also a clue for you that when you see this diameter 92, or we can, since we cannot use the chamfer tool, we must use instead of the extrude tool to create this uh, part, we must use the revolve tool instead to create this part. Alright, so let's uh, allow me to sketch it out for you so that we will replicate that sketch again, the outline of the sketch that we will use to create the revolve tool. The revolution here okay so here the center line will act the, like the line of uh, rotation so this center line here will be your line of uh, rotation next will be the the outline of your sketch so when you use the revolve tool we only need half of the sketch required for the whole part because at the end of the day when we have a profile we will actually generate a full circular shape out of it that's why we only need to create half of the outline here so the outline is as such one two three four okay ignore the r5 so we, this will be a, a sharp corner five six seven ignore this this is only uh, there is due to the m12 hole eight nine ten 11, 12. So we are to create the 12 lines as shown to you just now. Let's go to your inventor. Okay, this is your final product that you are to create in your Autodesk Inventor 2020. Alright, let's create a new file. Go to the file tab, click on new. And under the matrix folder, double click on standard mm.ipt. Go to your model browser, click on the plus sign to expand the origin folder. Left click on the yz plane, press the shift key and left click on the xy plane. This will select all three of the default planes inside the origin folder. Let go your shift key on your keyboard. Right mouse click and click on visibility. Alright, we have shown all the default planes in your origin folder. Now we will start with the XY plane. Click on the border of the XY plane and create sketch. Now click on line. We will start from this origin point here. So one. Two, 
three, four, five. Make sure these are aligned. Six. Okay, the alignment is done by the tracing line. If you notice, there's a tracing line there. Okay, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Right mouse click and press OK. Okay, we have all the 12 lines for the exterior outline of that uh, spindle part. Next, we will use this default horizontal plane here as your line of rotation. So click on project geometry and select this outline here. Okay, a maroon line will be projected there. Right mouse click, press OK. Next, we will select this maroon line, okay, the projected geometry. By left clicking on it, you will see it's now, if it's highlighted, it will be shown as a cyan color. And click on center line, just below your construction line option. Okay, click here. Okay, ensure that you have selected the edges and then you click on center line. If you have nothing, have, uh, if you have nothing selected, or you have no lines here selected when you change all these option okay be it center line or construction line okay let me take a uh, let me show you what what i mean when i click on center line with nothing here selected no edges no drawn edges selected what it does is actually anything any uh, geometry or entity that you are going to create next will all have the center line option uh, selected to you so let me just show you when i click line everything is drawn as your center line this isn't what we want okay press ok let's undo them okay make sure pay attention to the icons here when you have everything as center line you will not be able to extrude or apply the revolve even construction line is the same so make sure that the features that you want to revolve are having these solid outlines and then the line of rotation have this center line uh, line type to it. Next, we will add dimensions to all of this. Okay, so uh, let's add the diameter first, and then we will move towards the length of all the items here. So let's head over to your 2D drawing to see the dimensions. Okay, we have the outer diameter of diameter 100, and the chamfer is at diameter 92. This smaller recess here or steps is actually at diameter 70. Let's let's do this portion first. Okay, so three uh, diameters given. We have diameter 100, diameter 92, and diameter 70. Select your dimensions. Okay, the reason why we need to convert this to a center line is because when we apply the dimensions. It will automatically change it to a diameter format okay what if we doesn't change it this is what happened it will always be in the radius mode okay so always uh, apply the design intent if it's shown as diameter uh, symbol in your drawing you have to apply a dimension with a diameter symbol with it in okay right mouse click let's change it back left click on this to select the line and then swap over with the center line option apply your dimensioning tool here to this center line enter 100 and press the tick button you notice everything starts to run around okay that's where uh, things can get very confusing so let's do bit by bit right click press ok I will highlight all these edges here and then by highlighting all these edges I can drag it to the opposite side okay with that my sketch has somewhat re been repaired uh, from it next I will apply another dimension from here right click select others find the point of that uh, line here the line of intersection and go to the center line and enter it as 92 enter right click press ok let me just shift the dimensions around so that it's much more clearer 
for everyone. Now, from here to the center line, it's, it's diameter 70. So pay attention, click on dimension tool. From this horizontal line, make sure you have not selected the wrong entities. If you notice, even after projecting your center line, okay, you can actually still select the one without the, the, the converted one. Okay, So when you do this, you will only be presented with the radius. So please pay attention to what you have selected. Let's restart again the dimensioning tool. Click on this horizontal line to the center line and enter as 70. Now go back to your 2D drawing. At the rear side here on the left, we have a diameter 54, okay, the outer lines here, and a diameter 45, okay, the small step or undercut for this shape here. So dimensioning tool is there, click on this horizontal line and make sure you are selecting the center line. Enter 54, press OK, and this undercut, click it and to the center line and enter there 45. Press the tick key. If you notice, my edge here did not terminate on the line itself. So we just need to constrain this point to the horizontal axis here or the horizontal plane here. So right mouse click, press OK. To constrain this point to the line is using coincident constraint. So click on coincident here until this one. Now we have done all the diameters. Now we will apply the length of each feature. So again, let's start from the front part here and then we move to the left. So we, the taper here or the chamfer here has a length of 24 followed by 36. Okay, the whole piece here of diameter 100 from this edge till the front on the right here, it's 96 and the small step is actually 42. Okay, so we will use the full length of 96 followed by this 42 36 and 24 now go to your dimensioning tool select this edge to this edge okay let's ignore it first the reason why when we enter 96 now and press you notice everything starts to get overlap again so we don't want to get go into that uh, confusion uh, state yet. Press OK. Let's undo that portion. Okay, leave leave as it is, whatever value there is. Okay, let's start from the right side here, and then we move to the left. Dimension from here to here, it's twenty four. From here to here, it's thirty six. This is actually 42 and lastly we can change this to 96 to change it just double click on the text and you will be presented with this edit dimension and press ok so we have gotten our portion here let me just shift it around first move it around so it's much more neater for you to see but you it, this is optional you don't need to do it Now, on the left side here, we have 24 from this edge here all the way to the front. Okay, pay attention. This 24 starts where this 96 ends. Okay, and that undercut has a width of 4 mm. Okay, so 24 and 4. Let's go back to your inventor. Click on dimensions. From here, it's 4. And then from this edge, to this edge, it's 24. Oh. And press the tick button. Okay. Let's rotate it. Let's pay attention. We have all fully constrained, all black. And then if you notice, I do not have a horizontal line. A revolve tool uh, do not need this horizontal line. Uh, but however, if your revolve fills, 
go back to your sketch and just redraw draw out a line over it and then try again the revolve tool it, it, it will work after that okay for now leave it as an open sketch finish your sketch and click on revolve tool okay automatically everything has been selected for you because there's only one profile and one axis of rotation revolve uh, uh, rotate your view to preview it and press ok next we will start with doing this hole itself okay this hole has an opening of uh, diameter 36 that is angled at 90 degrees inwards with a smaller hole of diameter 24 okay if you pay attention closely this is actually a countersunk hole all right so this clue here okay uh, being able to identify what type of hole is actually uh, will give you a clue what kind of uh, sitting in your hole tool to use okay so click on hole i mentioned just now it will give you a clue as to whether is it a non-sitting a counter ball hole a spot face hole or a counter sink hole okay so for this case it's a counter sink hole it has an opening of 36 okay 90 angle leave it and a smaller hole of 24 now the placement is actually from the left side here okay this is your starting plane and select a cylindrical reference to centralize or to concentrate the current hole to okay if you see here the center of that hole has been centralized to the axis of the part and the termination is through all okay for this case there's uh there's no need for you to take the full length here and minus of 60 because uh this is it exists as a smallest hole so if you make it as true all the bigger holes here will actually overlap it and remove it all right so press ok we have done the diameter 24 hole next we will perform the, another hole function here from the right side so on the right side here, we have a diameter 68 with a depth of 18 and a diameter 36 with a depth of 60 mm. All right, pay attention. If, if you have been paying attention in class, this is actually a counterball hole. All right, so let's go back to your inventor. Click on holes. Select this right side face as your starting plane and click any cylindrical edges or faces as your cylindrical reference. Now, instead of a countersink hole, change it to a counter ball. The opening is 68 with a depth of 18 and a smaller hole of 36. However, this termination is true all, which is uh, not we want, not what we want. So we will change it to distance termination. And the distance now is actually at 60 mm. Okay, let's change it to the front view. You will be presented with a preview of that hole. Let's pay attention to this preview and double check it with your 2D drawing. Okay, so we have this hole, looks alright. We have this hole here. However, in your drawing, in your question itself, there's no uh, pointed drill point here. It's just a flat end drill point. Therefore, we need to remove this pointed drill point. On the drill point option here, click on flat. Okay, so this is what we, is required by the question. Once you are happy with it, press OK. Alright, we are almost done. Okay, what's left is actually creating this M12. Okay, 
and a 4 times diameter 24. If you notice carefully, okay, although the holes are only presented at, at two positions here because of the full section, when it states here the quantity is 4 by diameter 24, you can actually try to imagine uh, the full revolution is 360 degrees. So if you take 360 divided by 4, it, every hose is actually rotated by 90 degrees. So in fact, if I were to just see it properly, imagine that this is a circular feature here. This is 90. Uh, this is the starting hole. We will have one hole here. Okay, the second hole, the third hole will be here. The fourth hole will be here and we begin back to the, the, the starting point. And the starting point of this M12 hole is also tangential to this uh, diameter 100 hole, uh, diameter 100 step here. Okay, so we need to create a work plane that is tangent to this curvature. So before we even create the M12 hole, we need to create a work plane. So go to work plane here, select this edge, this work plane, the default one, and then just go hover over the diameter 100 uh, curvature or face. Okay, you notice there's a preview. You can go below it or at the top. Both are fine. So left click to apply it. Okay. Some of you might be doing this also. You can click on work plane. Okay, because it's diameter 100, right? I can use an offset work plane method. I can left click on it, drag it downwards. And if you notice this is negative, so we put there negative. 100 divided by 2 is 50, so 50. So both will give you similar uh, results. However, if let's say in the future, when you are supposed to change this diameter to maybe diameter 110, you will be faced with an issue where this offsetted work plane at the bottom here will actually be static. It will be always at 50 mm, while this top one will adjust accordingly. So let me show you what I mean. Let's click on this surface and click on Edit Sketch, okay, the second icon from the left side. I will go to diameter 100 here and let's swap it to 110 and press OK. Finish your sketch, pay attention. The top created plane is actually the plane tangent to the curvature. The bottom one is offset by 50 mm. Let's click on front. If you notice, the bottom one doesn't shift, but the top one auto adjusts to your updated dimension. So this is what I mean. Depending on your requirement, you are to create accordingly. So in terms of design intent, my suggestion is to use this tangential work plane instead rather than this one. Okay, so let me just undo it first. Okay, we will begin from this work plane number one and create a new sketch. Okay, so we will assume that this position of the hole itself is always created right in the middle here. Okay, because of the cross-sectional uh, half-section portion, right? So this horizontal plane here is necessary when we create the M12 hole. So we will use project geometry to make sure that that edge has been projected out for us to apply a center point to it. Right mouse click, press OK, and then click on point or center point and place it here. The distance of this hole with reference to this edge is actually 21 mm. So let's go to dimensions, select the center point and select this edge and enter there 21 mm. We can finish our sketch and click on the hole tool. All right. So, this hole tool itself looks like a counterball hole, okay? It looks like a counterball hole, but 
it can also be a spot face. Let's pay attention to what is the difference between a counter ball and a spot face. Let's go back to your inventor portion. Now, look at the dimensioning here. This is a counter ball option selected for you. Okay, the, the smaller hole has a length of 60mm that goes from the bottom most of the diameter 36 hole all the way to the starting point of how you create that hole. Okay, now let me swap over to the spot face. If you notice, the spot face uh, dimensioning changes. Instead of the counter ball hole where it started from this end to the topmost, a spot face starts after the bigger diameter. Okay, so that 60mm actually starts after it and then ends with the, the usual one. Okay, making that spot face is actually usually longer than a counter ball hole with all the uh, values the same. So let's go back to your 2D drawing and let's see, analyze and see whether we need to use it as a counter ball or a, counter, uh, a spot face style. For this case, we have a bigger opening of diameter 24, a depth of 2mm for that diameter 24, okay, quite straightforward. Next, we have a M12. When we uh, provided, when we are presented with this M12, we know that this is a threaded hole, okay, a tap hole. So, and this tap hole is not a true uh, full depth trap hole, uh, tap hole because it's presented by this 12 and 18. The clearance hole is 18 mm deep and the tap depth is only 12 mm. All right, okay. What I would like to achieve for you guys to focus is actually the depth here because it starts after the bigger hole of diameter 24 all the way to the end of your uh, threaded hole. Okay, so for this case, it's actually a spot face instead of a counter ball. So let's make sure that it's actually spot face. Okay, this has been selected correctly. Your termination is actually distance, good. Okay, your drill point is actually angle as shown in your drawing. The opening is 24 mm. The depth is two. Okay, we have a, uh, uh, what's that called? We have the full depth of 18. And the bottom here, we need to swap it for a tap hole. Click on the tap option. Under the trap type, change it to ISO matrix profile with a size of M12. We will use the cost trap for this destination, leave out the class, and on default is always on the right hand direction. Okay, leave it out. Okay, make sure that this full depth option has been deselected because we need to change the depth here. It's 12 by 18. Okay, let's double check. Your biggest spot face diameter hole is actually 24 with a depth of 2. We have a pointed drill point here, 118 degrees, it's fine. Your tap depth is actually 12 mm with a drill hole of 18 mm deep. All right, now let's double check, let's view it and press OK. Now click on your front view. You notice that when we first started sketching it out to create the revolution, we create a full straight line here, right? Next, when we create the hole, there is this curvature that has been cut out, out of it. Okay, that curvature is just created from that spot face hole, there's nothing else. Now, we would like to do a circular pattern, okay, of this hole around the feature here. So under pattern panel, click on circular pattern, select the feature, either from the graphical window, or from your model browser. Select your this rotation axis. Just click any cylindrical surfaces. Okay. On these instances, change it to 4 instead of 6. And we have a full rotation of 360 degrees. Press OK. And let's 
just double check again everything looks fine now let's do the last touch up we will apply the fillets and the chamfer let's apply the r5 fillets here and here okay so fillet change the value to 5 enter now we have a r8 fillet here so click on the edge and select create fillet change to 8 enter and lastly we have a chamfer here so click on the edge and select chamfer the distance here is actually 4 and press ok let's review your model making sure that everything has been selected and created correctly okay make it and take note when you create a tap hole there will be some trading uh treading okay a uh, texture being applied to it okay it looks like a tap hole and we have done our model okay so happy trying